Hey guys, it's Wilson. And I'm Kelly, and we're on the Muve. And today we're going to be talking about Cody, Wyoming, a really cool little town. So guys, in this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about Cody. We only spent three days in the location, so we didn't have a ton of time to do everything. But we're going to talk a little bit about the Ponderosa Campground we stayed at, uh, the Buffalo Bill Museum, the Cody Rodeo, the Buffalo Bill Dam, and the Irma Hotel, which was a pretty cool place to see. In Cody, Wyoming, we stayed at the Ponderosa Campground. It was right downtown. We liked it and chose it because it was very close to everything. Actually, we chose it because it's right next to the Dairy Queen, okay, which you'll see in the video. <laughs> yes, and so you can walk to Dairy Queen if you would like. It's in the back door. Um, we enjoyed the Ponderosa Campground. It's small. It's not huge. It's got a lot of, a lot of sites. Um, we had, the kids loved the playground. It had a laundry mat. The sites were a little tight. Um, it did have trees which made it tight to back in if, in some spots. Um, for some people, had some pull-throughs for bigger rigs. Um, we enjoyed the fact that we were able to get to everything within two or three miles. Yeah, you know? we had a back-end site, <laughs> and it was right up against kind of a little canyon area, which was kind of nice because there was no the one behind end. us. Yeah, we were off the road by maybe five or six campsites, but... We you, couldn't really hear anything. Yeah, you couldn't really hear a whole lot, even though there's a lot of traffic through yeah. Cody itself. But it's just very convenient. Mm -hmm. It was a Good Sam discount place, campground. It was also one of those that we call a kid tax. It added $5, I believe, per kid. Um, the rate that they advertised was for two people. Um, but we got the Good Sam rate, which was good. Um, you just say you kind of pay for the location is what you're paying for there. Yep. And the uh, ladies who checked us <laughs> in were great. They... Um, they sat there and told us everything, everything yes. in Cody, Wyoming to do. They knew <laughs> Even though we were really there for three days. She right. told us everything we could do. They did. And that was, you know, it's great because they know the area and yeah. they really do care and they want you to have a, a good time while you're there. Have you ever wondered if you were born in the wrong time period? I have. I've always thought about that. Like, you know, it would be really cool to be born in a different time period or you know, maybe even another location or whatever. I'm very thankful for where I was born and when I was born. But <laughs> Cody, Wyoming will give you that feeling if you really like the Old West. Yes, I agree. We love a good Old West town. It's a lot of fun. We enjoy the atmosphere. It gives you a different feel like you're in a different time period anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one of the great things about Cody is the museum that they have there. And it's actually... Part, oh, five museums in one. It's called the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. And they have, like I said, five different museums. They're all within one building, mm -hmm. but they're totally unique exhibits. Mm -hmm. And the first one we went into was the Cody Firearms Museum, which is just really cool. If you like guns, firearms, then you're going to enjoy this museum because they have everything from about four or five hundred years ago yeah. through today, modern weapons that and, our military uses. And it talks about all the history and how it affected the economy. They had over 10,000 <laughs> firearms on display. I believe they have even more that are uh, in their archives. They have these pull-out shelves that you just you pull them out and there's a whole another yeah. series <laughs> of uh, firearms there. They also had an interactive uh, simulator, which was really neat. The kids enjoyed that. They wanted to do that as soon as we got in. Uh, you get to choose your weapon. It was it was really uh, very realistic, I thought, target as you shooting. were shooting, target yeah. shooting. Okay. 
and kind of a, almost like a competition type thing and you could compete against each other yeah and of course that's always fun of the <laughs> new household because we love a little competition <laughs> with each other uh, great Great museum, I really enjoyed it. I think the whole family did, but if you're a firearms enthusiast, you will find it to be an excellent place to visit. So another one of the museums that we checked out while we were at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West was the Whitney Western Art Museum. Um, I'm not a huge art fanatic or connoisseur, but I enjoy some art that really appeals to me, and subject matter is what matters a lot of times. And since I like the West, this museum is just really cool. By the way, that was my son Very hitting rocks. the rail, okay, of something back here with a rock. So that does happen. Yes, he's back here bowing. Okay. Anyway, the museum uh, is set up in a way that maybe won't appeal to younger kids. And our 14-year-old and 9-year-old didn't really care for it a whole lot. But we forced them to go through. And to I do think, a little art appreciation. I think yeah, a little good. art appreciation is good for everybody. But um, I really enjoyed it. They had artwork by Remington and Russell, Moran, Bierstadt, and some other modern uh, Western artists. They had Impressionist type art. They had just traditional, you know, scenes. They had sculptures. A lot of Yellowstone art. Lots of Yellowstone art, mm -hmm. which was really cool. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that part. And some historical pieces as yeah. well. Yeah. So it's worth a walk through. It won't take you a long time if you're not really an art person. But if you are an art person, you can spend probably yeah. probably two hours in there yeah. just kind of observing everything. One, so. of, one of the guides also talked to us and said that the Smithsonian approved it. They're accredited by the Smithsonian because of the way they present their artwork. And so I thought that was really cool. So if you like the Smithsonian type atmosphere, um, it gives you, they have benches around. You can sit and kind of look at the huge pieces. Um, they have interactive ones where you can learn about the history in the art piece. So there's a lot to do in it if you are an art person. Oh, and there was this really cool piece of art. And I, I'm not big on the Impressionist type art or whatever it was, but <laughs> it had multiple scenes from the Battle of the Little Bighorn. And it was really <laughs> cool how it was laid out. It, it had the village, it had Custer, it had all kinds of different scenes, probably 20 different scenes mm -hmm. in the one painting. And I just thought it was a, a true work of art, mm -hmm. and you really had to sit down and, and look at it. A lot going on, yeah. Yeah, and read about it to figure it out. And it had both perspectives, Native American perspective and Custer and the Army's perspective, and I just thought it was very unique uh, in how it was presented. Great museum. Check it out. Another favorite of our family, especially the kids, was the... <laughs> Natural, the Natural History Museum, the Draper Natural History Museum, where they had exhibits of all the wildlife and different ecosystems. You could go in different levels. You can even go under a beaver dam. It was very interactive, even the smells of the area where you're going in this, um, this region of the country. Um, the kids got to interact. They got to hear the sounds. They got to smell the smells. They learned about the different animals. We really enjoyed that one. It was very hands-on and definitely kid-friendly for our family. Younger kids especially will yeah. enjoy that museum because it is hands-on. You can touch. They have artifacts that you can you just put your hands on where usually in a museum you're told no. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was kind of unique about this particular museum. Yeah. All right, so the fourth museum that we were in would have been the Buffalo Bill Cody Museum, which is super cool. <laughs> Not just because our son Cody is named after Cody, Wyoming, yes. which is also named after Buffalo Bill Cody, but <laughs> the museum has a, a whole timeline of history in that one. It, it's his life, it's his shows, mm -hmm. it's his influence on the rest of the world about how the yeah. West was actually created. Um, we talked. We, th we talked about how it was related to like Barnum and Bailey. Like he included everybody in all of his shows. He was, you know, he he enjoyed working with all types of people. I thought that was really a neat 
showcase of who he was. Yeah, I think my next read is going to be about Buffalo Bill Cody because I've become very interested in him. And I, I like <laughs> Western culture, Western literature anyway. But Buffalo Bill Cody is this interesting example of a guy. He's a scout. He is intrigued by the West. He comes out, he guides troops. And then he also comes up with the ability to create a show that showcases what's going on out west mm -hmm. and he travels all over the world i mean he, he performs for the queen of england yeah they have posters they yeah. have artifacts artifacts some of his showman outfits you know and things like that yeah and i really didn't know a lot about cody before we went through that part of the museum but the buffalo bill um, show must have been just this great show that existed during the time period that really showed people what the West was a little bit like. So, worth going into. The fifth museum that we visited in the Buffalo Bill Center of the West was the Plains Indian Museum. In this museum, it was a place where we could see the stories of the Indians from all the way back to the 1800s. Artifacts, cultural pieces, headpieces, clothes, all kinds of traditional things. It was really a neat place. They had art, um, had sculptures, had interactive videos. It was a really neat place to learn about the Plains Indians from this area. Um, it taught the kids a lot about their culture. Um, we sat inside of a sweat lodge, was it? There was a sweat, sweat lodge. lodge there. Also, they had a traditional so a house, house or a yeah. lodge yeah. where multiple families would have lived in. It mm -hmm. was full size. And that was pretty yeah. interesting to go in there. It was made of mud and then uh, like lodgepole trees. Mm -hmm. So it was, had several interactive pieces in it as well. And the kids kind of enjoyed this one as well. So it, it was more to explore in this museum. We had a really good time learning about the Plains Indians. Yeah, and if you are interested in Indians at all, Native Americans, we should say, um, it's a great introduction to natives. It's not a huge museum but it's enough that you can learn some stuff from and kind of get a, a background for the Plains Indians because uh, we live back east and you just don't get that yeah. information you know, there. I've been to the Smithsonian Museum of the Native American up in Washington, D.C., and it's pretty unique, but you don't get that individual uh, feel for the tribes, I think, like you do when you go into a museum like this. Exactly. And it shows an appreciation for Native Americans you know, which uh, is well deserved. You can't go out west without seeing a rodeo out here. We went to the Cody, Wyoming rodeo. Cody, tell me about walking in your cowboy boots <laughs> as we get into the rodeo here. It's so hard. It's so hard. What's wrong? Because they hurt your feet. They hurt your feet? Yeah. yeah. Mama, you ready for a good time? Yeah. Yeah. Ready for some rodeo? Yeah. yeah. Maddie, how about you, little lady? You're ready. What are you ready for? The rodeo. The rodeo? What's your favorite event? What do you mean? What's your favorite event at the rodeo? What you like? Bull riding? Like calf bull riding. roping? Barrel racing? I like bull riding. You like the bull riding. You like the dangerous stuff, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for some rodeo too. So here we are at the Cody Wyoming Rodeo, Cody Night Rodeo. Ready to go. It is every night in the summertime from June through August. At 8 o'clock. At 8 o'clock. My favorite event was the bull riding because <laughs> even though no one did make it, but it was still very fun. I really liked bull riding and it was just a very good rodeo. I really liked the clowns because they were very funny. <laughs> and yeah, what was yours? I like the bull riding. I think everybody's favorite event of rodeo times is the bull riding. Um, the barrel racing is fun too because we get to cheer on the girls, um, seeing how fast they can go. And quite a few of the girls were very successful in their runs on barrel racing. So we had a good time. Yeah, last year we went to the rodeo in Dallas, Fort Worth, and that was an indoor rodeo. The kids got to experience an outdoor rodeo this time, and we really had a great time.
So we unfortunately missed out on the gun show that takes place in Cody down by the Irma Hotel every night at I believe it's six o'clock, except for Sundays. Um, it, time kind of slipped away from us. We just in, ended up doing quite a few things, and we just it happens it. when you're on vacation and you're touring somewhere. You don't get to do everything you want to do, and we only had three days in Cody. We knew that, but we did venture down to the Irma Hotel which was owned, I think, partially or in some part and way by Buffalo Bill Cody, of course. And it was named after, I believe his daughter? Maybe. I think. I could be wrong Maybe. about that. But um, <laughs> what he did was he established a hotel because every town needed one. And you can see the original bar yeah. that's in the hotel. We ate lunch, lunch there, yeah. kind of a late lunch. Yeah. We were walking downtown checking out the, the shops. They do have a lot of shops downtown. And you can buy anything from artwork to t-shirts, yes. <laughs> um, pretty much the regular tourist stuff. But we went downtown and we ate at the Irma Hotel. There's a bar, there's a restaurant, there's the hotel part. Yeah. Uh, it's still it, running today. Still running yeah. today. Yep. It's more kind of like bar food, I thought, yeah. you know. But it was really good. We had a good time there. Yeah. And just the history of places. Yeah. I enjoy the history of locations that we go and see. And it's one of the reasons we try to pick some of those small places like the hotel to eat at mm -hmm. because you feel like you're part of yeah. history. You're sitting in there and you feel like you're back in the older days as we said we feel like we like to be a part of the Wild West and so yeah it, I should have had a pair of chaps and boots <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah of course um, so um, we enjoyed the meal there and seeing the atmosphere the all the bison hanging on the walls and big mirrors. Elk, and, huge elk yeah, in there. It was a really neat experience. So you got a feel for being back in the Wild West. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this, We've talked a lot about Buffalo Bill Cody already and he, he really is the creator of this town. He's the reason the town existed. There was a push to create a reliable source of water in the area because one of the things about Cody is it doesn't have a reliable source of water. No. There's the Shoshone River which flows through that area but after the snow melt is over there's no guarantee of water coming through. Yeah. They needed irrigation to farm and so the Buffalo Bill Cody Dam was built of course named after Buffalo Bill and uh, there's a small visitor center where you can walk through. It's a self-guided tour walk out onto the dam and when the dam was built it was the tallest dam in, in the, the world, world. Mm -hmm. and so it was the a major 1900s, yeah early 1900s mm -hmm. major accomplishment you know before the hoover dam before any of those big dams that we know of today this one was built and it really helped sustain life in the area the community of cody so the drive over to cody wyoming is an interesting drive because we came from rapid city south dakota and if you're coming from Rapid City, there are three roads that you can take. Mm -hmm. I believe it's 14, yeah. 14A, and Highway 16. Yeah, so. And those roads carry you across the Bighorn Mountains. You're good from Rapid City until you hit the Bighorn Mountains. And then you have to make a decision about one of those three roads. Well, we decided to go 16 based on some recommendations of friends of ours. And the campground said the way to go is... 16 all the way. Yeah, the campground host was great about that and, and told us, you know, stay off the other roads. <laughs> 16, going across the mountains, we got up to, what, about 9,200 feet yeah, or so. Yeah. It's a pretty good incline, and it's probably seven or eight miles up. Yeah. And then about the same going back down <laughs> the other side. Going down towards Cody is pretty steep. You're going to be going... 20, yeah. 15, whatever, <laughs> around a lot of curves because there's some pretty severe switchbacks. Yeah. But I, I would definitely recommend, you know, if you have a camper to go 16. Yeah. If you're just driving yourself, you know, no camper, not towing anything, either of the other rides are fine. Yeah. yeah. There's even signs out on the interstate that says the safest road to Yellowstone. So if you're on your way to Yellowstone, heading through Cody in the east entrance, that's the safest road to go with the RV. And that's definitely the way the campground said to come. Yeah. <laughs> 